hello to our next edition of uh, Animation Insights, uh, our little team where we feature uh, interesting filmmakers, interesting films. Uh, and today we have a young shooting star of animation circuits, Nikita Diakur, right? Yes. How do you cope with that? Because like you have let's say two films, and now everybody expects the uh, next masterpiece. So do, is it blocking you or you're free and you're doing your thing? Yeah, I think I was lucky with Fest because uh, I didn't really think about anything. I was just doing it very fast. And then I was not expecting it to go anywhere. And then it went uh, to a lot of places. But uh, I try not to block myself too much. But I'm, I expect things to fail many times. So if the next film is not going to go to places, then I'm, I'm okay with it. Good, because some people uh, get really blocked with the success of a previous film. Huh? So it's not so uncommon. No, I'm happy. I can die now. <laughs> you can die now. <laughs> okay, why not? No, why not? <laughs> I mean, uh, you are like born in Russia and uh, like living in Germany. Uh, are you more Russian filmmaker or German filmmaker? Or is do, how do you see it? And then the Russian scene is a little bit, let's say, conservative. It changes uh, in last years. And your filmmaking is rather very forward. Do they accept you as a Russian filmmaker or do they don't not notice you or i don't know some russian uh, filmmakers or russian critics they um follow what i do and i think they like it sometimes sometimes they do sometimes they don't sometimes they tell me the, their criticism and it's a valid criticism from their point of view and uh, sometimes even from my point of view it makes sense if i look on instagram i have many uh, friends on Instagram who are from Russia, actually, surprisingly, many many Russians. It's also the ugly YouTube channel. Most of the comments are in Russian, which is interesting. So they kind of accept it, accept that that way of filming. But I'm not sure about the old, uh, the, the, the traditional Russian animators who are already super famous. I think they don't even know yeah. about my existence. So. <laughs> <laughs> Your work stands uh, up in the animation scene in the first place because it's a very unique and experimental visual style. No? So you are, it's a 3D CGI, but usually 3D CGI we will all think, I guess people will think on uh, something very polished. Your all these unfinished uh, parts, imperfection, ugliness, uh, you leave uh, wire frames in the picture, you leave handles and helping lines from software in the end product. So how did you develop this and what influenced you? Yeah, it was a, a long process. For me, I think ugly took four years to make. And in the beginning, I wanted to make a very ugly film in the beginning, but then I couldn't um, uh, resist and started making things beautiful and made all the sunsets and rendered everything. But uh, yeah, later with Fest, after four years in the making, I was thinking that uh, because it's using computer and it uses simulation and it's, so, it's all about numbers and digital, uh, that it actually makes it more real to show that digital side of it a bit more to actually show where it comes from to show the original place where it uh, um, developed and that was the 3d software and that's why all the wires and things are in there so i tried to make it as direct and as honest as possible with uh, what i do and i try to make it also uh, work with the story in a sense so that it doesn't distract too much from what the film is actually about i think that's the most difficult part actually to not get distracted by all the stylistic choices and because in the end it's always a story sometimes it works to tell a story with uh, an experimental style but sometimes it's quite difficult yeah it's more it's more risky to try to make it with the experimental to my opinion yeah. but and somewhere i read it's called dynamic computer simulation the style so what what is that <laughs> what does this mean <laughs> yeah, you, I think dynamic, I call it in the beginning like that because it's uh, in um, the software cinema for d uh, they call it dynamics, which is basically a term for playing with gravity or basically things that get calculated for you in a physical way. Uh, but you can also call it uh, interactive animation and that's connected probably with computer games because you are uh, interacting with a computer and the computer is kind of helping you, assisting you in 
uh, achieving a result. So you kind of uh, you kind of give away control that you have as an animator to the computer. The the thing about um, animators and live action filmmakers is that they're all control freaks, but animation people are most control freak, the biggest control freaks because they want to control every much to tiny little detail as much as possible. And in live action, you have to work in a team. So the way you control, you have to uh, let other people do. And that's uh, kind of what I try to do with my animation to give the control, but not to a team, not to people, but to a computer in a sense. And he is kind of my, my partner in, in crime. And uh, you had a Kickstarter campaign for Ugly, uh, 200 bakers, uh, 10,000 uh, euros. So what, what was your experience? Would you recommend everybody to do that? or? Yeah, I think when I was doing it, I was kind of lacking money. And I was thinking, um, I was, I saw many positive uh, examples of Kickstarter. And then there was a potato salad that won 50,000 uh, euros. So basically a guy who wanted to do a potato salad, the perfect potato salad, he kickstarted it and he got 50,000. <laughs> So I was thinking, okay, that's a good platform to get money. Uh, but it was um, really tough. It was a really hard experience because you uh, underestimate how much work gets into it and how much you have to beg people and uh, make it in a smart way. And if I would recommend it to other people, I think if you have a good project, if you have something that could be interesting, then yes, why not? One way of getting money. And it's also a good way to... Um, to could do market marketing for your film to kind of get it out and to force yourself to uh, post things, show stuff while yeah. it's still in the making. Where do you see animation like when animation is going to? I mean, now animation as a cinema form is like 120 years approximately, more or less old, uh, and your style is quite advanced. So, what do you think will happen? What will be the future like? Uh, will VR take over, or is it just a gimmick, uh, or, or what will happen? It's very difficult to predict. I'm not sure about uh, VR is a medium, but I think yeah, we're still gonna cinema together in one room, especially after Corona. Everybody's gonna be happy to be together again. I think what's gonna take over the AI, which is gonna help to do things a lot. So it's strong, it's, it's already strong, maybe even stronger. But uh, in the end, I think filmmaking will always be about storytelling, about uh, provoking a feeling to kind of reach the audience, to get them think about something that they experienced themselves in their lives. And uh, so that's gonna stay the same. But in terms of techniques, it's always gonna develop. And in terms of medium, yeah, there will always be different ways of uh, going forward. I think it's, it's always been like that and it's getting faster and faster. But it's, yeah, we're always gonna look at stories. And uh, you mentioned Corona isolation. We are all uh, isolated, but as animators, kind of used to it. So, what are you doing preparing a new film? I saw your, let's call them exercises, your experiments uh, on your Vimeo channel. Is this something which you are like uh, developing for us to enjoy. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the um, fighting gravity is a really nice uh, experiment that made with a programmer, Max Schneider. And uh, we used a uh, source code by um, Jason Tang, who is working in, uh, at Berkeley University on many different projects, uh, with, which are focusing on machine learning. And we tried to make a film about um, it's kind of it's a big project that has a name goals for now working title goals it's basically about achieving goals and uh, right now the film will be about a backflip okay. we, uh, we hope we will see it then in some of the future editions uh of Zagreb. you've been to that a couple of times even in the jury so uh, how would you describe the festival to somebody who is thinking of going there yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really sad that it's not happening this year, uh, at least not now, maybe in September. But yeah, it's definitely a place to visit and not experience online. And it was, for me, it was my first ever festival experience. So to me, it will always be something special. 
and, and you're you're always you always feel welcome the everybody loves to go to the cinema the cinema is always full and yeah the picnic is great it's amazing lots of rak, rak, rakia <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um yeah so it, it's definitely definitely something to look forward to okay uh what we ask all participants is like to say which shouldn't be a problem for your russian <laughs> soul <laughs> and it means this not your zagreb okay okay i'm gonna do many z's <laughs> Z, 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 Z. <laughs> I wish I had a third third hand to do the Z. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Thank you very much. We thought we will meet at some place somewhere. Yes, definitely. And continue drinking and talking about animation. <laughs> yes, Daniel. See you soon. And uh, yeah, good, good luck in preparing the festival for September. Yes, thank you. <laughs>